Hi friends, this is Sarah. Welcome to Crafting and Relaxing. Every month I do a video about tidying up in my room and usually it's a, a bigger scale tidy. I think this month we need to talk about junk journaling stuff. I was a card maker and a scrapbooker and when I got into junk journaling, things got away from me and everything can be used in a journal. I've made covers out of junk mail, pool liner, wrapping paper, shopping bags, you name it. It's out there and when it shows up in my house, I think, hmm, I'm gonna keep that. But I just started with piles of, this is for journaling. I didn't think about subcategories. And if you watch my channel, you know that I am what Clutterbug calls a butterfly. I won't micro sort things. I won't use two hands to get things in and out. And if it's buried too far and put away super tidy, I'll never even remember I have it. And we have a lot of that going on here. I opened up the cupboard of shame this morning and there was a craft -a that came out of it. And I've been trying to figure out what to do with this bin, basket, whatever you want to call it. It is to the point where I have taken things out of it and I can't even get them back in. So I think what I'm going to do is really take a look at some of my junk journaling supplies and say, did I save stuff that I don't want to use? Because maybe I was just learning. Maybe I have better stuff now. Do I need categories? What else could I do? And I know that I've hooked some of you on junk journaling and you might have the same problem because Nancy sent me an email that I read and thought, yeah, me too, friend, me too. So let's get into it and we'll see if I come up with some better ideas. But right now I have a bunch of stuff stacked in a cupboard. I keep my fabric in bins and this is bags of some page sizes that I've sorted and books and just I put everything in there until I couldn't fit things anymore and then I started shoving them everywhere else and now it's such a mess I can't even figure out do I have pages handy to make journals quickly what's my plan I have started clearing out these shelves the center ones were junk journal items and I pulled those out because they were mixed in with a bunch of scrapbooking and cardstock. I have piles around the room because of that. And then down here I have tons of paper. Can you see? It's a whole shelf of paper that could be for junk journaling and this could be for junk journaling. This is my actual bin of supplies I use to assemble journals. So I have stuff spread all over and that's part of my problem too. I figured this was gonna be a big mess so I set up a table to lay it all out on and maybe film on. I'm not sure how that's going to work because I think if I move around, the camera's going to bounce. So we might have to change it a little bit, but I'm going to take everything out of the bin. This stuff and all this it was all in the bin. It lived there originally. So we've just got to figure out a way to thin it. The other thing is I'm not supposed to lift more than 20 pounds. Well, we might be there. So when I choose my storage containers, I need to think about how heavy they're going to be when they're full of paper. I have another one of these that I think it has fabric or something in it. Other stuff, it's not as bad, but maybe this size is just a scotch too big for me. I think the quickest way to do this is to get the stuff out of the bin and then start sorting it by like items, just like you would anything else and then figuring out what am I actually going to use. Maybe there are journal themes, maybe there are sizes, I don't know. These bags, I think I made at the beach one weekend. Small. Page size, small. Mm. These have potential. See, that's the problem. Everything has potential. And I think if we stop and think about everything as we go, oh, red, white, and blue, that is going to take too long. Now, originally, there was a shoebox in here. I started with a shoebox, then I went to the bin. Cars. A yearbook. That's more for art journaling, really. I would never find it in here. There's a number four, but I lost that during a July daily because it's a pretty blue. All of the envelopes I'm gonna put together and they're not gonna go back in this bin because they fall down to the bottom and it just doesn't make sense for them to be here. 
and wow, there were a lot, weren't there? Here's another red one. Okay, this is a book that I thought I was going to use. It has funny, yeah, I don't use it. I just don't. And it already was trash once, so now it can really be trash. Don't feel like you have to keep everything because you're saving the planet. The stuff was made. You didn't create it. It's already on the planet. There's a decluttering guy that talks about that. Keeping it in your house will not save the planet. This is a cute sticker. Okay, these are Noni's junk. Uh, I don't know that it makes sense in here. These are my junk. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to keep... This yellow part because I might want to do some sort of collage with it because you know I'm going to use blue and then I'll have yellow and blue right Cheryl okay uh, music there for a while I didn't have any sheet music I just thought I was like not going to make it as a junk journaler I had to have sheet music and I think I bought a little too much or it just shows up, I don't know. Giant envelope, don't know where that came from. Okay, these are deli papers, like the gel printing, and they just ended up in here, but that's okay. This one, yeah, it's a mess. Okay, teacher's guide and key for our English language. It's yellowed. Doesn't smell too bad. I like it. And in fact, some of this, it has a different color to it. It's more yellowish green than like a vintage brown. I'm gonna pull a couple pages out and put them in my collaging bin that's in the front room. I wonder how much stuff I can put in the front room before Mr. Crafting and Relaxing complains. One of the ideas about this bin that I had was if it had some music and some different stuff, I remember, I'm not saying this is how we're gonna do it or it's a good idea, but if it had a little bit of everything, then when I took it to the beach or somewhere, I can make junk journals with it and it would be wonderful. Okay? It's not a bad idea, but the bin was so full I couldn't have carried it to the car, I don't think. Okay, uh, I have a little golden book because, you know, I was going to do one of those projects. This is the package to some paper. I don't have to own that. Uh why you know sometimes you are traveling and then you put stuff away I, I don't know why I would have put all this cute printed paper in there but I'm glad I found it right now or maybe I was working on my July daily and it landed there I think maybe Kathy sent me these last year and I'm gonna set these all out in my July daily in fact we're sort of two birds with one stone here because I need some pages for my July daily I don't know if you guys can hear me, but we'll try. How about that? Maybe I need to yell. Oh, one day I thought, well, for like two weeks, I thought I was gonna be like a hand lettering person. And so I had some hand lettering pads. This is just like a regular old notepad. Sketchbook. I think I got this at the art swap or something. Watercolor paper, maybe? Super fancy paper. So let's put, I just got these in a happy mail thing. Well, a porch gift from Mary. So let's put these fancy papers in with these other fancy ones. This one's not big enough for a page though. This would be awesome in my book. Okay, then let's put these two in here. Okay, a whole bunch of gel prints that I had forgotten were in here. Let's see if any of them make sense for July Daily. I feel like these are my rejects. <laughs> a lot of pastel in here. Oh, maybe that one. Yeah, not, not my favorites. 
I haven't done any gel printing in quite a while, so those have been sitting here. Uh, cards. Mostly I use these to put washi tape on and Happy Mail, but I never would have found them in there. Okay, at one point I was thinking I could make journal covers with these. I can make journal covers with them, but I could make journal covers with so many better things. In fact, I think somewhere I have another pool liner, so I'm not going to use that. And I think you just have to be okay to say, I don't like that, I'm not gonna use it. In fact, while we're at it, maybe we should put some of this pink paper in my go away pile. Maybe I should wrap a journal, maybe the pink journal should get wrapped in one of these because I feel like she might like it better than I do. Let's do that too. Okay, so then I'll keep these because you know sometimes you need a little splash of color. Okay, I have a million of these pre-made card bases because they're in almost all the lots and different things that Noni and I end up with and neither one of us really like them because they're sort of flimsy. But they're pretty good to sew into journals, so we'll keep them. Okay, the majority of this box is fancy specialty paper. I mean, I would say at least like an inch or two of it, that's what it is. Look at this one. Wilson, that's enough. So they're not... They're not big enough necessarily to, from one piece, make a journal cover, but with that much, you could definitely make a journal cover. But what I was thinking is I should sort things by what I expect them to become because that's where I'm going to look for them. If I keep this in with the pages, the cover will always be made. Okay. I would say this is all pages except for this bit of fabric lost in the bottom. This is trash. We have some sheet music in here too. The little golden book doesn't have to be in the bin. It should probably just go on a shelf. Uh, are we gonna end up too heavy again? I don't know. Let's go through some of these. Maybe, maybe. Part of it is sometimes you're gel printing and you should have gone back over something like this one. I'm not gonna put this in a journal the way it is. This one either. They're just not interesting enough. Not that one. Mm, I don't know what journal that would go in. So those are going in my collage pile. That one's just going in the trash. Sometimes you get sick of things. You have different things. If I had a friend here that wanted to mix and match and sort, they say that other people's trash is more interesting than your own. I'm not going to put this back in there because... I've never once said, gosh, I need a boring piece of notepad to use in a journal. I think I was worried I would have like a paper shortage and so I put all the pads of paper in there. I don't know what I would use these for, maybe for making art journals because they're thicker paper and this one I'm not gonna use for that. So this, uh, there's journal cover stuff. Oops, right there, I was so close. This is a piano music book. Again, some of these you have to smell because you might throw things out purely based on smell. And that's okay too. Free isn't always good. I'm gonna put this with the journal cover stuff because maybe I will. Maps, I love maps and I can never find them. Oh. Sales orders, little carbon copy sales orders to put in the pockets and journals. This is really more of a journaling card, goes in a pocket type thing. So I'm gonna put this in my other bin that says, what does it say? It doesn't seem to be marked anymore. Oh, here we go. Tags and journal cards. It's things you could write on in journals. Maps make amazing journal covers on the inside, really cool. Let's see, Kansas City, Kentucky, 
Great Britain and Ireland. This is going to need a, an inside cover. Since it's my July daily, it would be really awesome if it was a map of the US or a state I've actually been to. A lot of these things I've already taken stuff out of. I don't feel that I need to own that anymore. I do have a giant atlas. Maybe I could get a map of the US out of it. Uh, clearly, I did an experiment here. Okay, I don't think I need the Greater Kansas City Attractions thing. If I was doing a whole bunch of scrapbooking about my trip to Kansas City, I might keep this. But honestly, I don't even know if uh, Scraps KC is in here and that was my favorite thing. Okay, visit Kansas City. You can see I keep everything. I don't think I need this either, but we can recycle this. Oh, I like this. Uh, this came, I think, in a challenge or something. Noni gave me these. She made something. I don't love the cherries. I just don't. So I'm going to put the cherries in my go-away pile, but I'm going to put the red dots. I think they're red. Do you? Yeah, they're red. I'm going to put those in my July daily. Maybe we'll use some of them. And I put the cherries in my craft go-away pile, not the trash, because it's possible that somebody else will understand the potential there. Now, the maps, I think I'm gonna put all the maps in with journal covers. That's one thing that I was doing is just putting everything all together, but I just don't think that's how I work. First I make the cover, then I start looking around for other stuff like, oh, that's fun. I think that was for Mary. If you have a tiny amount of junk journaling stuff and you, you know, you're not sure you want to do it, you could keep it all in one bin. If you're restrained and you say, okay, I don't need to have that many items. What I'm doing here is I'm looking at this envelope. It's taller than my July daily is going to be. So I'm going to put it, it's a page. Um, so that's the other thing that might be confusing if you're watching me thinking she's crazy. Okay. This is an envelope, true. It came in junk mail. But it's not a small envelope like this. This would be a page, and then I would slice it here, and it would be pockets on both sides. So I want to keep it with things that will be pages or make giant pockets. Oh, this bag, I'm going to put in my collaging because it's a little too far gone to be a pocket in a journal or a page, you know, where you sew it in, you have pockets on both sides. Uh, these are all odd things. Let's put those over here. These big envelopes are great for making journal covers. Uh, junk mail, actual business things. Yeah, keep those. Oh, hard rock. I have a bunch of bags. Honeybee Stamps and a lot of other companies, they have cute bags. So if you have cute bags, use them. And in fact, we're going to put this one in my July daily because it fits. The honeybee stamps ones were too big, and I love hard rock. Is that weird? I don't know. I've always been a fan and collected their pins when I travel for years and years and years. So let's go like that, probably, and it'll go in my July daily. In fact, let's just put it right in here so it doesn't get lost. This can go right in with these. It's the same concept. Same for the paper bags. Mm, I was kind of hooked on this, but now I don't care. Uh, Pollo Loco, those are really old chip bags. My husband loves Pollo Loco and we don't have it here. Little brown bag. Uh, let's use that in July daily maybe. Okay, these are giant pages from an atlas. I have the whole rest of this book, but those are just some pages that I had torn out probably to go to the beach. This is a piece of chipboard that is seriously warped and I have a lot, so we'll recycle that. You can't keep everything that is functional. Sometimes you just look at them and say, okay, these are less beat up or less stinky or cooler. I did like this. Let's put that in my thing. Uh, I'm not gonna give up on these. These could be, there's a lot of possibilities here. Let me show you. They could be a pocket and a page uh, stitch across the bottom or glue, cut them, they're a pocket. They could be a flip out thing where you go like this. OK, 
Okay, imagine it tidied up with scissors. They could go like that on a page, glue this in. Uh, I'm gonna put one of those in my July Daily, we'll do that. They're gonna be embellishments or pockets. So I'm gonna put them in the pockets one. Now, I don't think these containers are the right idea yet, but the categories are working for me at least. Pockets, tucks and envelopes, and tags and journal cards. So essentially, these make pockets or spots in a journal, these go in them. So we can put these index cards in the one for tags and journal cards. This is adorable. It's a little envelope that seems to have glued itself shut. This one, pockets. Now, these are typically cute things, not just junk mail. This one needs some embellishing before I give it a spot in here. Okay, let's see what else we have in here. There are things we haven't even seen yet. Oh, okay. The company store. The reason I have this catalog is, oh, this is part of a piano roll, and I have those somewhere, and they should be in a better spot. Okay, if I keep the piano roll in the bin, it has a better chance of getting used because it's never gonna get used on that shelf. I knew it was here, but I haven't touched it in months. So what I thought was I wanted to look through here and see if there's any bedding that would just make my heart happy. And if so, I probably wanna collage with it, right? I mean, did you know I was gonna tear that out? Yeah. Oh my gosh, look at this one. It could be something that you tear and use. I'm not that into fish, but I like the blue. Um, oh my gosh, look at that dog. So when you get catalogs or junk mail, you can look at them. It's not my dog, but it's still a really cute dog has blue fish on the back, we better keep it. And you don't have to, look at that one. You don't have to keep the whole catalog because for me, if I do keep the whole thing, I won't even remember why I had it or that I did have it. These are like kids and really neutral. I think we're past the good blue stuff. Okay, now we recycle, done. Same here cottage style. Okay, so I'll go through this one later on my own. I'm gonna throw it on the floor. Uh, okay, these coloring books. Andrea and I had some of these and I think we really thought that I would use them. Maybe we got them in a lot. I'm not sure where we got them. I don't use them. I don't put them in my journals. They don't speak to me. I mean, they're cool, but I I'm just, I don't really color. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in my go away crafty spot. That way it doesn't just sit in my life and take up space. Okay, these are nice watercolor paper. Uh, it was a long story, but I used the other part to make card bases. So maybe one goes in my July daily and some go in tags and journal cards because they'd be wonderful there. Well, this is pretty, let's use that. Okay, these are an experiment that Noni did with a laminator and glitter, and they make kind of cool pockets. I think I used one in my July daily last year. This one has gold something in it, so I think I'll put this one. Our battery's going low, so you're about done watching this, watching this process. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, so this all goes to the collage room. So these bags, I'm going to do the same thing I have done in general. I'm gonna go through them and say, okay, this bag says they're gonna be pages. And I'm gonna look through them and see, will I actually use them as pages? Mm. You have to ask yourself, how desperate would I have to be on paper to use this? Probably pretty desperate. I'd have to be making something small or want a, a small something, maybe. I like the lighthouses, that's cool. These are not big. I mean, they might make perfectly nice pages, but they're not big. 
This was planner paper, I think, maybe in Noni's trash, and I thought I would use it. Oh, that's just cool. Let's put that in my July Daily. Uh, a lot of these are scraps from other projects I made, so maybe they don't speak to me as much. Maybe I'm tired of them. These look like I was making journals and prepping. I mean, I've already prepped signatures here, so I just can't let that go. That's like so close to being useful. Oh, here's a green one. When you make multi-signature journals, like this one, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six signatures in it, you need a lot of paper. That is a ton of paper. Oh, and look at the map on the inside. That's a cool one. So, and in some of these, right, it was motorcycles and Mustangs. It's a good one. You use a lot of paper. And if you want variety, you might use a lot of these small things just to make it happen. Because I think this was a Triscuit box, maybe. So it's not an eight and a half height. So you use a lot of these things. So depending on what kind of journals you're going to make, are you going to make ones like this? If so, you'll need a lot of page material. If you're going to make more like this, where there are scrapbook papers, you don't need a lot of page material. You just need a lot of decorative and ephemera type stuff. Since I make it all, I seem to think that I need it all. I need to charge my phone, so I'm going to go plug my phone in and I'm going to work on this and then I'll show you how it turns out. I'm going to set a timer for 15 minutes. I think I made it worse. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Recycle and the pink paper for wrapping. This is going to go in holiday stuff. That's going to go in collaging. This is just going to go. It is all pastel-y. I tried to like it, tried to use it. I haven't. I found some blue stuff and took it out. This bag was fairly well sorted. I just organized it a little bit and I added some envelopes that were full size. I added to my July daily pile. I took some of the music out of here and put it in there for collaging and I put some in the small pages. So I'm not gonna put this back in the bin. So if the idea is grab the bin, pull it out and make a journal, you wouldn't necessarily need to have this whole book in there. Just some of it, a little here and there. This box is all envelopes and they were all in that bin. So I either need to think about doing some envelope projects where they're solely, oh, this one I could collage on, where they're solely envelope books. There are a lot of ideas for those or I need to use more envelopes. I typically, in a journal, I might use two. That's it. I wouldn't use a whole bunch. Envelopes, a stack of envelopes. These are all not A2, so they're not card size. So I've been trying to figure out what to do with these. I'm going to put all of these in here together. And these are not something that I always need to have. This, I'm going to put that bag back in it. It's lighter. I took out the box. It lets things lean a little and get in there. These are folio type things with cream colored papers in them. I'm going to go through and make sure there's nothing. Okay, like this is shimmer paper of some kind. I don't want to use that in a journal. I'd much rather use that on a card. So I'm going to go through and be sure there's no paper in there that I would prefer to use for cards. And then I'm going to put those back in there. So I think it's going to be about half as full, which means I should be able to move it around. But I'm still trying to figure out what to do with these tags and journal cards and the pockets. Maybe they need a shoebox. They will stick up high, so they're not going to be stackable. This one will fall over, I think, at some point. It gets a little floppy. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit, and my July daily pile keeps growing. My categories for a while will be stuff I would make covers, stuff I would make the pages of the journal with, uh, envelopes I need to whittle this down and then maybe just put them in there, and then things I would decorate it with. Tags and journal cards and pockets and embellishments. Maybe I have like four categories. Over here, I think this is all sheet music. Like I said, I got a little carried away. I'm not sure it's all 
Yeah, it's all cheap music. Oh, no, there's some manuals and craft books. It's all vintage junk journal-y stuff. And so that might be another way that you would separate. Maybe you would have your vintage stuff together and then your bright colored. Because I do have, on top of everything I've showed you, I'm embarrassed to admit it. Up there, I have a bunch of envelopes and paper bags, covers. Then down here, I have tubs. I have iris cases that will someday be journals. Travel journal, journal supplies from Beth. That's really cool. Vintage stuff, vintage and natural. There's also some collaging stuff in there. Oh, junk journal stuff I like. My next journal. Interesting. I should probably look in there and pull that out for July Daily. Digi kit from Melody Made, and it's beachy. So let's pull out stuff I like. Clearly it's blue and see if we can use some of that up, you can see it just starts to spread. If you had told me that I would have a craft room with leftover kitchen cabinets and a 10 foot section of counter and a six foot section of counter, and it would be this full, oh, and this cabinet, I would not have believed you at all, but clearly it's gotten away from me. So I'm really trying to think about what will I use, not just what is usable, but what will I use? If I have a bunch of pink paper, like that paper, that's gorgeous paper, I'm not going to reach for this to use it. So I should give it away because I would much rather have blue. Maybe that's how we think about our junk journal stuff. The other thing is over time, you get an idea of what you're going to make. I don't really make vintage journals, but I do love the vintage in with the nature, garden catalogs and that kind of stuff. And my stash of that has gotten up. Maybe that's how you pick your next project. Maybe you say, I have so much sheet music, I need to find ideas, or I have so many envelopes, I need to do projects with those. Or maybe you just say, I don't need these envelopes and you donate them. I didn't buy any of these envelopes. They all came into my life. I don't know if that was helpful at all, I don't know if it was useful for you. I didn't touch the cupboard of shame. And you can see in there, I have all sorts of things. I find that a giant book, like those encyclopedia and that atlas, I probably haven't opened those in a year. And there's cool stuff. So maybe when you want to have dictionary pages or encyclopedias or collage, that kind of stuff in your collage, maybe you just tear out pages and you put them in your bin by the TV. Let me know what you like, don't like. If you're somebody who's been around for a while, feel free to email me or message me and tell me your ideas and we can keep talking about them. I do dream of a time, sometime in the near future, where there is one section in my room and the journaling stuff is all there. And I think the way you do that, and I hate to say it because, I mean, look what happened today even, and I didn't do it. I think the way you do that is you pull the stuff out of the shelves and you move back in again. This came in first and then this came in later. That is part of why things aren't grouped because this stuff was already moved in. I wasn't gonna empty out the cover of cupboard of shame just to rearrange and move this in. Maybe that's what I need to do. I just think you have to rethink your space all the time and look at what you are using and not using. My mixed media stuff, sadly, has just been sitting down there. If you remember quite a while ago, I took it out of my rolling cart because I wasn't using it and I didn't think it was high enough priority for my cart, but I haven't been doing mixed media. It's in my goals to do every month, my crafty goals. I don't do it. It's not that I don't like it, but I'd have to clear a spot, right? <laughs> I wandered off, did a bunch of things, had dinner, all kinds of stuff happened. Overall, I'm glad that I did this today and I think it was a good idea. I had many other things I probably should have been doing, but <laughs> I think it turned out okay. I do like the categories that I have for pockets and tucks, tags and journal cards. I have this box of envelopes, which is likely a project down the road. This is tags and journal cards. It has sentiment and paper to write on. It was in the bookshelf over there and I just never really thought about it. I mean, I've used it a few times in journals, but mostly I've forgotten lately. This is much lighter now. I, I might have to give it up later, but if I don't fill it, I think we'll be okay. 
This is my July daily pile that's pretty much all from what we went through. There's other piles of it over there. I'm not really sure where to put the playing cards so that I will find them again later. And then I have this one butterfly card left. A few loose ends to deal with. But the other thing that I was doing as I worked on these was grouping like items. You'll see that there's a whole other tub of mixed media now. It was up here in this corner and I never looked in it. It was over here, awkward, and I probably wouldn't have even thought of it if I needed a paint color. And this is the south wall. So I do need to be a little bit thoughtful about what I keep right next to it in the summer. I think because this extra board was there, it'd probably be okay, but this wall actually gets warm and I've heard it's supposed to be 90 this week. I don't know if this shelving, if the shelving unit is a good idea for me. It doesn't seem to be real useful for me. So I might want to think about emptying it out and putting iris cases in it or having it be its own category. Maybe, I'm gonna say something crazy. It should be where I tuck projects away when I need to work on another one so that I don't end up with a six by six pad and July daily stuff mixed up. The fact that we can see this much counter right here is a pretty big step. So I'm pretty happy with that. I don't have to take everything out and you know stop crafting and do one giant project, but I think as I group things, I do need to think about getting all of the items together and figuring out which ones I really want to keep. I hope this was helpful. I don't know if it was super useful or interesting for you. Be sure and leave me a comment. Maybe the videos where the room looks super cute at the end are better. I think this one was a deeper level of organization and sometimes things get worse before they get better. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.